welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. Today I have another Jack Daniels on the cask. For those of you who like Jack Daniels probably know the gentleman Jack. For everybody who ju just knows Jack Daniels from, I don't know, the club or from some parties with, with uh, Coke, then, um, then the Jack Daniels gentleman Jack is not well known. Gentleman Jack is a bit more of the premium whiskey from Jack Daniels. And it actually is a very strange whiskey because um, you have to have you have to abide the laws of the Tennessee whiskey. So you have to have the charcoal mellowing. And what they thought, okay, the charcoal mellowing is one of also our greatest assets. And they thought about so why don't we charcoal mellow the thing twice? Um, they thought about it and what they came up with was the charcoal mellowing process before and after the maturation. It doesn't say anywhere in the Texas uh, state law when you have to charcoal mellow. So usually you do it after the distillation because it mel makes most sense. But they here do it after the um, maturation as well. So you distill it charcoal mellowing, maturation within within the cask for three years or a bit more, three and a half, four years, and then you charcoal mellow it again. And what it comes out is an even smoother whiskey. Yeah. It also makes the whiskey a bit lighter. If you have it in your glass and you compare it to the, let's say, old number seven, which is basically the same whiskey, except for this one step, then you realize um, it takes a bit out. The, it takes out the color a bit. It's, it makes it a bit lighter. Um, but most of the um, changes come in the taste. Yeah. It's still when you when you smell it, you still have pretty much the same smell. It's very light, smooth. Oh, you. No, there's a bit of a difference. You can stick your nose in even deeper and you get even less of that alcoholic note. So it's it really feels like like smelling a strong syrup there. Maybe not quite as sweet as a syrup, but it gets there. It's it's in the region. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Mm. So it's even smoother. I just have it in your mouth and you just realize, oh, it's sweet, it's caramel. Oh, it's, it's really, it even makes it a bit oily. It's so, so smooth that it's even a bit silky smooth with a bit of oiliness. And there is a story going on um, that back in the days, I think it was, Franklin D. Roosevelt? No, it was, was even before that. I'm not quite sure. Somewhere, in, uh, I think, um, at the turn of the the 19th century, so 18th to 19th, no, not 1900, somewhere around then. And I think one of the presidents, I'm not quite sure which president it was, wanted to um, declare bourbon as the national drink of United States of America. So he wanted to pass a law that all the whiskeys out there have to declare themselves bourbon. And um, Jack Daniels was really not happy with that because he was distinctively not a bourbon. He said, no, we're not having a bourbon. We're having a Tennessee whiskey and our whiskey is different. And it said that he actually sent a barrel of his stuff to the White House and they tried it and they realized, okay, yeah, that stuff is different due to the charcoal mellowing process. And then they uh, said, okay, everything is bourbon, but you can have your own state laws about, you know, Tennessee whiskey. And you still have a house bill, not quite sure, 1820 something under the Tennessee law that you have to abide by certain rules to be able to do Tennessee whiskey. One of them is you have to be in Tennessee. The other one is you have to do charcoal mellowing and a lot of other stuff that is very, 
very, very similar to Burma. So, got carried away with it. Yeah, smooth, light, and the aftertaste is, taste is quite uncomplicated and a little bit short. Mm. So this is really a little bit of a step up from the from the old number seven, because it's just the old number seven with a bit more smoothness, and from the bottle with a bit more style. But the the design of uh, Jack Daniels is also very iconic um, because Jack Daniels it fo form follows function here. So Jack Daniels was a very very greedy person said to be a very greedy person so what he did was he actually ordered square bottles because you could fit in inside boxes or i don't know how they transported back in the days you could fit in more bottles when they were square than you when you were round you had more airspace in there so he could fit them in tighter and ship more and save more money with that and that's why Jack Daniels has that iconic square bottle. Everybody else has a round bottle. Jack Daniels has a square bottle because you can save transportation space and therefore money on transportation because you can have more Jack Daniels on every uh, truck or back in the days it was uh, the, the railway. And yeah, the Gentleman Jack, I think it came in later, but it's still, it's, it's flat, but it's still, a square bottle yeah they follow the old tradition of <laughs> stacking in your bottles very tightly and if I've worked a bit inside the, the warehouse when I was younger and yes they are actually a bit smaller the boxes from Jack Daniels are a bit smaller because they are just a bit uh, tight more tightly packed there's less air in it but they're still kind of heavy yeah <laughs> that's a bit of an anecdote of why Jack Daniels bottles are square. It's because of greed. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this video interesting, then please feel free to share it with your friends and see you next time.